2024 is giving us a whole new Android release to look forward to in the form of Android 15. And it's a big deal for all sorts of wide ranging futuristic reasons to do with the Gemini AI being at your fingertips, satellite messaging letting you text from the boondocks, and a back gesture that finally will actually show you where the swipey thing is going to send you back to. But 2024 is also the 10th anniversary of another highly consequential Android release. 2014 saw the release of Android 5 Lollipop. Back when times were precedented, G's were maxed out at 4, and updates, whether to a new software version or a whole new smartphone, were the kind of thing you could really get excited about. Android Lollipop also ushered in the modern age of Android, with the debut of Material Design, 64-bit support, the Art Runtime, Project Volta for battery life, and a ton of other things we take for granted today. So as the Android 15 and Pixel 9 launch begins, it's time to take a look back at the new Android hotness of a decade ago, and see how it compares to the latest version Google's preparing for 2025 and beyond. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA, let's jump in. So the first thing that strikes me about the difference with Lollipop compared to where we are with Android today is just how much the fundamentals could change from one year to the next. For example, take the past three years of Android, from Android 12 in 2021 to Android 15 today. Okay, you can point out minor UI tweaks on Google Pixel phones, but for the most part, it's the same old material U. It looks and behaves the same. A decade ago, Google would pivot with whiplash intensity from one Android release to the next. In 2011, we went from Android 2 2.3 Gingerbread being the cutting edge with its dark greens and oranges and a very retro looking interface, to Android Honeycomb on tablets with its heavy sci-fi inspired interface, eventually leading into Android 4 Ice Cream Sandwich, which pivoted again towards sharp typography, light blues and a more magazine style UI. And from then until mid-2014 when Android Lollipop launched, it wasn't unusual for sweeping visual changes to arrive with each big annual Android release. Lollipop, though, was the biggest to date around the time it landed. It was the introduction to material design, the point of origin for the Android design language that's still with us today. Unlike the current Material U, though, this was built around the concept of digital paper, of each surface you interacted with being a magical piece of paper that could expand and contract to fit whatever you were doing. But because it's paper, you've got this subtle shading around the icons and windows that help to convey depth. It's a theme you see throughout the stock Android 5.0 wallpapers. Another hallmark feature of this early material look was the idea that everything you interacted with would animate into view from somewhere. Nothing would just pop out of thin air. Even apps shuffled onto the screen from the bottom and were dismissed back off screen when you went home. That paper effect is gone in the Android of 2024, but many of the visuals first introduced in Material Design version 1 are still around today. The radiating highlight effect when tapping buttons, for example, dates back a full decade. And look here, an early floating action button, which plenty of apps still use today. So at the surface level, Lollipop still pretty much feels like Android. In fact, though, the visuals that were created for Android Lollipop's announcement at the Google I.O. 2014 developer conference showed a much more ambitious vision of material design than was ever seen in reality on any smartphone. That's just what happens, I guess, when the idealism of Google's designers runs up against the dozens of separate teams maintaining all of Google's individual apps like the Play Store, Phone Dialer, and Play Music. There's still a lot that I appreciate about this era of Android design though. Arguably, many of the apps like the Phone Dialer and Gmail have a much more balanced look than their 2024 counterparts on the Pixel 8 Pro here. Which brings us to the biggest visual difference between this Android and current Android. Back in the Lollipop days, individual apps, and especially Google apps, had their own color palettes that gave them their own sense of identity. Hangouts was green, Google Play Music was orange, YouTube was red. Today, that app theming is mostly defined by the colors picked out of your wallpaper by Android's theming feature, part of Material U. This can have the effect of making your phone's palette more individual to you personally, but also means apps often lack their own sense of identity within them, with everything taking on the same off-white color based on the primary hues of your wallpaper, and every Google app now using a similarly incomprehensible multicolored icon. Not saying what we had 10 years ago is necessarily a better design than now, but individual apps definitely had more character back then. 
This being before the age of gesture navigation, navigation and multitasking is definitely the most different feeling thing about Lollipop. On-screen keys were still the only way to navigate, and these got a mini facelift with geometric back home with recent apps keys and Android 5 that stuck around through until Android 9 Pi in 2018. And Lollipop swapped out the more information-dense recent menu of Android 4 for this Rolodex-style arrangement that played into the digital paper vibe of Lollipop, where your apps took on the form of just an endless deck of cards. A year later, Android 6 Marshmallow would improve further on this with a double tap gesture to quickly hop between two apps, which kind of worked like an alt tab does on Windows. But by far my least favourite thing about this card deck multitasking system was how Chrome would interact with it. In Lollipop, each Chrome tab would show up here as its own individual card, instantly creating a whole lot of extra clutter, unless, unlike me, you were the kind to closely curate all your browser tabs. And there were similarly unpopular changes brought into the volume slider where the simple mute switch before was replaced by a new do not disturb mode system that could filter out either non-priority alerts or mute absolutely everything up to and including alarms. This change was quickly rolled back in the following Android 6 release, no doubt after many a missed alarm. I also wasn't exactly a huge fan of the way the notification shade and quick settings area looked in Lollipop. That's something modern Android definitely does better in my opinion, no surprises I guess after all these years. That said, Android Lollipop did introduce a few changes for notifications that we take for granted in Android today. Heads up notifications for calls and the like could alert you without interrupting the app that you're currently using, and even include buttons for actions like calling back or sending a text message. Android Lollipop existed before the age of the Google Assistant, and the voice features that did exist back then were pretty basic. The state of the art back then was the OK hot word, which would activate plain old Google Voice Search. That's the extent of what talking to Google looked like in 2014. In 2024, we're at the intersection right now of Google Assistant, which is currently nine years old, and the new Google Gemini AI, which Google is already pushing TV ads out for ahead of the Pixel 9 launch. And when Gemini does ship as the default AI assistant on the next generation of Pixels, all its advanced capabilities will be at your disposal, possibly before you even know you need it. An AI that's always there in the background could help protect you from scam callers. And when you do want to actively invoke it, it's smart enough to instantly chew through a PDF or a YouTube video and answer questions on it. That's in addition to the usual email writing and cat playing a guitar AI cartoon trickery. AI voice assistants are arguably the biggest user-facing difference in how Android works in 2024 versus a decade ago, and that gulf is only going to widen with the launch of Gemini on the Pixel 9 later this year. Another holdover from earlier Android releases is Google Now, activated by holding down the home key and swiping up. This feature is no longer active, but used to bring up a card deck of relevant local information like weather, exchange rates, local news, as well as some things that on a modern pixel now populate the at-a-glance widget, things like upcoming flights and appointments. This, in my opinion, is far superior to the largely spammy garbage in the current Google Discover feed, and I think it's a real shame it was eventually discontinued. With that in mind, it's also interesting to call out a distant relative of Google Circle to Search, a modern Android feature that acts as a visual AI search capability for anything on your screen. Now, there's nothing like this in Android Lollipop, but the next release after it, Android 6 Marshmallow, included something called Google Now on Tap, which fed details of apps on your screen into Google to bring up relevant related info. Pretty neat. Like I said at the start, this was a period of constant change for Android, and as well as regular visual overhauls, Google was continuing to tinker under the hood with Android's fundamentals. Lollipop saw the move to the new Arch runtime, which compiled apps in advance, as opposed to as they were executed. It was effectively a free performance boost for Android, though it did mean that every time your OS updated, you'd need to sit through this screen while all your apps were recompiled. That was a big Android pain point in the mid-late 2010s. And something called Project Volta, new in Lollipop, saw Google finally go to war with the battery-hungry Android apps, streamlining background processes and letting app developers measure the battery cost of the things they were doing in the background. That was in stark contrast to the old approach where Android was only ever one poorly optimized app away from having poor battery life. And it went hand in hand with a dedicated low power mode, the first in stock Android. Both were the starting point for major improvements to Android power management made over the past decade. So it's surprising for a decade-old OS that Android Lollipop in a lot of ways still feels pretty much like Android today. And over the next year, with the launch of Google Now on tap, Android Pay and Google Assistant, more of the pieces of the modern Android puzzle would start to fall into place. 
but it still takes several more years of plugging away to address Android's ongoing issues with system updates and security, with monthly security patches and Google Play system updates coinciding with Google's demanding more of its partners when it comes to supporting the devices for longer. That process, of course, would accompany continual design refinements and overhauls of Android itself, especially on Google's own devices, through until the end of the 2010s. So as polished and stable as Android is today, there's still something special, I think, about the look and feel of Android 5 Lollipop and the devices it ran on from the glory days of early Android. So share your memories of the Android of a decade ago down in the comments, stick around and subscribe for more retro content. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.